Morning, this is Jeremiah's J-Man Manero with J-Man Seminars. We're here with Millennial Who Talks, episode number 32. What? So exciting. Listen, everybody, we're here with Heather Haas. Haas. Yeah. She's from the Dayton, Ohio area. And we're going to be talking about all things real estate. If it's your first time tuning in to Millennial Who Talks, we like to inspire others with real stories from real estate rock stars from all over the world. Okay, so this is... If you like what you hear, comment below, share it, tag a friend, and follow us. Okay, so let's get right into it. Heather has been in the business now since the ripe old age of 29 years old. So let's let's get started in the beginning. First of all, thanks for being on the show. No problem. Thanks for having me. So tell us, like, when did you get started? What got you started in real estate? And, like, uh, how it was in the beginning? So uh, I'm still what I consider a baby realtor. I've only been in the business now a little bit over two years. And um, hi, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I started in about May 2016. Mm -hmm. But my journey kind of started a little bit before that. I've been in retail almost my whole life. Um, I do have a background in communications and public relations and counseling and different things like that. But um, all tie into real estate. Yeah. Like, I mean, I know about customer service and all that. So I was a customer service manager for a very long time. Um, but I hated the retail world. That is really what started it. Um, I was working 60 hours a week for like $9 an hour as a manager. And the demands like was just not, it was so stressful. I was coming home. I wasn't spending time with my family. Uh, I'm a single mom. I wasn't spending time with my daughter. And um, finally my mom, she, she, uh, she helped me out a lot. She's just like, Heather, you need to do something else with your life. Um, so she's like, her uh, late boyfriend unfortunately had passed away. She's like, why don't you take some time off and help me around the house while you figure it out? So I did that and we got into HGTV, which I know I just got a whole bunch of eye rolls on that. <laughs> um, but one day we're watching the Property Brothers and my mom kind of points at Drew Scott and she's like, I bet you could do that. I'm like, I bet I can. Wait, uh, yeah, that's me. I was in Nashville the following year as I was getting my license. That's amazing. Um, they are the sweetest guys. Uh, I actually sat down. They sat down with me and talked to me about real estate, and they gave me a whole bunch of tips. Like, they are amazing guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're like on the edge of my seat. Like, what are they? Tell us. Tell us more. <laughs> They're so tall too. Like I'm five five. I'm not. I'm short, but I'm not. I'm average for like a girl. So um, they are like six five. So they towered over me. Um, but yeah, they talked to me before I met them. They taught. You know, we did our pictures. I wish I had sent you the picture of them with my daughter. Um, and then like afterwards, um, they sat with us and just kind of sat and chatted with a whole bunch of us. Uh, it was really cool and intimate and everything. And um, but they kind of, you know, inspired me. But uh, I didn't get into this without doing research, too, because I knew it was a commission based job. Right. I knew I wouldn't be making like tons of money off, you know, at the top of my head um, from the get go. I knew it was a, I knew it was not a get rich quick scheme. So, and I feel like that's a lot of people's issues is they see like people making money and everything. They don't understand like what really goes into it and you don't make as much money as everybody thinks. But I like that there is no ceiling too. like you can have unlimited potential. Um, it, I did about research for about two months and I would I, I lived in Tennessee at the time. I knew I was moving back to Ohio, so I did research on how to get my Ohio license. And at the time, Ohio didn't do online courses, so I stayed with a friend for about three weeks, and I got my uh, Ohio license during that time. 
uh, took my test in May. I passed it the first time, which is like amazing. Nobody's playing. <laughs> um, secret though, I passed it by like one point. <laughs> passed, right? That's all that matters. Passed, yeah. And uh, secret to the real estate test, uh, a lot of people don't tell you. It just tells you how to not get sued. Um, <laughs> And a lot of people don't know that too going in like they're like oh i'm gonna get sued all the time i was scared shitless to, like, <laughs> but, i mean like my first showing i was like so scared to even talk because <laughs> um, i think uh this is a house uh i don't know what else i can say yeah. because, uh, <laughs> and you see those hgtv shows and they're just like showing like this is the kitchen you're like no shit it's the kitchen we see it's the kitchen yeah um i have a joke about that actually in my comedy routine where i feel like i'm going from the windows to the kitchen this is where you cook your chicken <laughs> That's um, because it's just so so ridiculous sometimes those shows and it's like okay i see that um but it, I got used to it over time, uh, obviously. Um, but yeah, that was kind of my start into real estate. So let, let me ask you this. So you were in Tennessee mm -hmm. and you're originally from the, the Ohio area? How long were you originally from the Ohio area. I'm originally from Ashtabula, Ohio, which is the top yeah. northeast corner of Ohio. Gotcha. It's um, actually two hours from buffalo we were talking about buffalo earlier right. um and it's just about an hour east of cleveland um i've moved, lived all around ohio uh i settled on dayton because i knew um we were getting a fresh start and i knew i wanted to live not near the snow that lake Erie <laughs> like has. Think effect snow is real yeah um and my first choice was actually Columbus, but uh, I was going to be moving up with my mom and my mom doesn't do as well in cities. So I'm like, let's do Dayton. It's a little bit on a smaller scale. I lived in Dayton before. I liked it, but I really only knew two people moving here. Um, and I didn't love Cincinnati as much as my friends wanted me to. <laughs> so that was kind of like a good middle ground. Our north of Cincinnati, our west of Columbus. Um, so that's where I made my home. There's a couple important points there, I think, to bring up. So not only were you making a move, getting started in a new business, but then it, it, this is a new area where you only know two people in a business where it's all about people and your sphere of influence. And so what were some of your like ramp up strategies? What was the first year like? How did you get out there, meet people and do business? Because it's hard enough when those of us who start in real estate and we know a lot of people in our area to to get started in the business? What were some of your strategies? Um, luckily, I really, really love talking to people. So I knew I wouldn't have an issue with like networking and different things like that. My issue was I listened to way too many people and um, I was being pulled in every single direction um, and I wasn't focused on one thing. Uh, and it definitely showed in my business. My first year, I only did one transaction and that was my mom's house. Um, <laughs> otherwise, I was making my money more as a showing agent. Gotcha. Um, I, When I got into the business and what I recommend everybody to do is interview with us. If you're thinking about getting into the business, if you're watching this and you're thinking about getting into the business, interview with as many brokerages as you possibly can. Um, because one brokerage may not be the best fit for you. And yeah, something like you might see, uh, oh, you might make 100% there, but they don't give you anything. They don't give you any support or anything like that. And as a new agent, that's really, really hard. Um, but what I did is I teamed up with a lot of the older agents in my office. Um, I don't want to say older, seasoned, more experienced. And um, people have been doing this for a few years and kind of were finally getting, you know, they weren't too far from me. They were usually like about three to five years into the business at that point. And I helped them for one, but I kind of just followed them. Um, I made sure I teamed up with as many people as I could and followed them around and learned, you know, their styles. Um, I also got really into education. Um, 
just last year, I think I did 65 hours in CE, um, which that's, you know, something I need to bring up. Like you don't want to do it always for CE. Sometimes it's just the extra learning. Uh, so going to like rebar camps and everything like that. But honestly, I felt very lost within my first year. Um, I, because I was being told like, you should do for sale by owners, you should do expireds and stuff like that. For sale by owners made me cry. Um, <laughs> I went and tried to talk to a couple for sale by owners and they were so mean to me. I'm like, why? I'm like, I'm just trying to help you. <laughs> um, but it took me like two aha moments. I had my first aha moment like within the first six months um, because I was getting a lot of talk from some seasoned agents who were just like, this is the only way you need to do it and you need to follow this. And that's a great thing I finally discovered about real estate. There isn't one way to do this. You have to find the way that best fits you. Um, so that was like my first aha moment was I was at a, a rebar camp in Dayton and I met um, a couple of people out there. Specifically, I met uh, Philip Becker. He uh, kind of spoke to me about like video and everything and what he was saying like made a lot of sense. And I'm like, that's what I want to do. I'm like, I want to socialize with people and connect with people that way. I don't want to, I'm not one to make a bunch of cold calls or anything like that. I want to connect with people. Right. Um, and I kind of, and then I got hit by the winter slump and everything like that. Uh, I went into a really, really deep depression there for a while. I'm like, I'm not going to do good in this business. Um, and then I met uh, that following spring, I met Sean Carpenter um, and I was like, this is it. This is the guy I want to like build my business around. Um, like I want to reflect what he does because he's all about building relationships. So I had kind of like a heart to heart with him a little bit. And then um, he encouraged me to go to Rebar in Nashville, which was two days after I met him. So I made a last minute trip, went down there. Uh, and then I got a pep talk from um, some of my friends at the board and I realized I needed to be focusing on something. So I made my focus on first time home buyers. And when I did that, I did 10 more transactions within the next few months. And I had only done one at that point. Finding your niche. Mm -hmm. Five minutes, you get rich. <laughs> you get rich. All right. <laughs> um, but a couple of things in your story I want to highlight. The fact that, you know, if somebody's new and you're watching this, you're a new agent and you you get your license and you're sitting at your desk and you're wondering why your phone isn't ringing and you're not getting the transactions that you hope for, take a page out of Heather's book here and work with agents in your office. Collaboration, you know, offering to not just follow them. She, it's that's an education process in itself, right? I mean, you followed all these agents. You mm -hmm. saw what they what they did right, and you might have saw some things like, "Hey, that's not for me. I'm not going to do that." But at least you could experience it through their eyes rather than through your eyes and with your clients, right? Yep. And so, uh, I would imagine at some point, if like there was there was a referral opportunities there for you, and right, I mean, you're building relationships within your office, which I think sometimes. As new agents, you have to realize, even though we're all competitors, we're also all colleagues, right? We're all working together. It's not like as cutthroat as many people might think. It's not, and it doesn't have to be. Like people don't need to be jerks to each other in this business. We can help. There's plenty of business to go around, um, and you learn from other people. Um, I think I I heard this word a couple of weeks ago. We're not competition, we're co-opetition or something like that. Yeah, I like that. Um, I think it was co-opetition. I may totally be butchering that. It's very possible. All right, we're gonna go with it. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna roll with it, yeah. Um we don't need to be like fighting each other all the time. Uh we really need to be helping each other and we can grow better that way. 
So I'm always encouraging people like definitely, you know, network. Um, that's something uh, I would definitely mention to people to do too is join your local board or join like local net network groups um, and talk to people um, that are in this business because they are going for the same thing as you. And one, if you have a transaction with them, it makes it so much easier. And two, like they might be able to help you come to a solution that you never thought of. Uh, I'm a part of a ton of Facebook groups. I do a lot of Facebook networking too. Um, I have a lot of friends that have helped me out uh, that are um, in Facebook groups that I've never met. I went on a cruise a couple months ago with realtors I had never met before in my life. Um, and they were like the best people. Um, just, you know, randomly, I'm like, I made friends with them online. I'm doing a retreat next uh, year with a wonderful group of some women who are, um, you know, great. And I know I can call any of them, anybody across the country and say, hey, I need help with this. And, you know, they'll help me. That's excellent. So you talked a little bit about volunteering and getting involved. Let, let's segue to that a little bit because... Yeah. You do you do a little bit on the, at, at your local just board, a, right? a getting involved. So, how how or why did you start? And then what what kind of you've mentioned a little bit some of the returns you're seeing, but how like what's in it for me? That's I mean that's what when new agents are asked to volunteer, like or younger people in general, we're like ah, I don't know I'm busy. Why should I? So like yeah. if could you answer that, like what what is it meant to you? You know, doing all this volunteering. Um. One, it just builds a great network. Um, mine is more for, I generally love meeting people. Hi, Johnny. Um, I genuinely love meeting new people um, and learning their story. So um, I'm not saying go out there and meet a whole bunch of people across the country if you don't feel comfortable with it. Do what is right for you. Um, but definitely make friends in this business. And I got very involved at the board. Um, I first got wrapped into it. Um, I was only about six months into it. And um, the recruiter at my brokerage at the time, she said, uh, she's like, why don't you help me plan this YPN event? Um, YPN was kind of like restarting in the Dayton area. We had a network and then it kind of fell off for like a year or two. Mm -hmm. um, so it was kind of starting back up. So she's like, why don't you help me plan this event? It was an event called Brew Ha Ha that we teamed up with the Women's Council of Realtors where we take a party bus and <laughs> we go to local breweries and we dress up and it's super fun. Um, I may have sent you the picture where I'm dressed up as Taco wow. Bell. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if I did or not. If not, it's not a big deal. Uh, that was last year, though. Uh, my first year, I dressed up as a Zestimate, and I told people wrong information. <laughs> <all the time. laughs> um, so that was fun. Oh, that's Stephanie. She's my co-chair. Um, I love her, and she is probably my biggest like supporter. Um, if I am having any issues, she will call me. She threw me a surprise birthday party this year. Oh, and she's the sweetest. I love her. And she's not, she's, you know, eight, uh, I don't want to say aging out, but she is. Uh, <laughs> kill me now. I'm going to get a call. Um, she is rotating out of the YPN because one of the big YPN things is replace yourself. Right. Um, and okay. so you can only be in it so many years before you have to kind of move up. So she is, you know, hitting that three or four year mark where she's moving on to bigger and better things. Um, yeah, I'm going to get E.J. now. She's younger than me, by the way. <laughs> what's, but, what's, this, what's this picture here? So that picture is um, I go to this holiday reception at the board. Uh, that was probably my uh, next big thing. I wasn't specifically this picture. That was last year, but the year before, I uh, we were had a, a YPN does an ugly Christmas sweater party at the board. Um, mm -hmm. Now the holiday reception is supposed to be a nice fancy 
event fundraising event for Toys for Tots. Um, but the YPN put a fun spin on it with uh, ugly sweaters. Well, I kind of took it up another notch. Um, my first year going was I dressed up as a Christmas tree. I put garland all around myself and I put lights that actually lit up like all around myself. And I wore like a little tree topper <laughs> hat. Um, and Mr. that's Schmeier. how people started to know me. They're like, you're the girl that's the Christmas tree. Like, I remember you. Um, and then the following year, that picture you saw, I dressed up as a snowman. I haven't decided, I'm already planning my costume for this year. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but um, it's fun. It's just like an extra little fun thing. And that's where people really started like noticing who I was, was they're like, oh, you're the Christmas tree girl. Yep, that's me. Um, and then I was at, oh, you're the girl who volunteers on all the committees at the board. Uh, yeah, that's me too. <laughs> but, but like, I'm, I'm glad that it's helping you to get exposure mm -hmm. to other real estate agents, people that are in your marketplace. And, and it brings up another like really good point for people to take from this interview is that you're not afraid to be yourself, right? No. You're, you're, not, you're not worried about like, Oh, Heather, you gotta be, you're like, you know, I'm just gonna do me. And if you don't like me, I don't care. It's, it's who I am, right? One of my biggest things, and I even had that in my notes when you said uh, tips for new realtors is be authentic. Um, there is no right or wrong way to be a realtor. And I don't care what people say. This business can be very, um, my friend Johnny actually who commented earlier, he just did like this really cool uh, video. And he said, he even said in his video, like this business could be kind of judge judgy, but I'm just gonna be me. And I can't say it any better myself <laughs> um, because that was also my big aha moment too, was I don't need to be other people. I am, I need to be myself. Uh, hi, Paula. <laughs> Love you, Paula. Arizona is the best. Um, but yeah, that's a big thing. Um, last year I dyed my hair purple. Uh, there were a couple people who were just like, oh, that's unprofessional. And I'm like, yeah, well, it's not for you. It's for me. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting business off of it. Like, you know, unintentionally, but people are like, oh, I really like you. Like, and you know they'll talk but that's kind of the millennial mindset too millennials are very authentic uh they're all about being yourself well i think that ties into your niche first time home buyers millennials yeah. kind of yeah absolutely so you you have a real estate team now i a it's partner? not my team so it's that's another team. thing i would tell most people if you're quite unsure about this business yeah that's my team so that's miranda right next to me and then that's my team leader right behind me that's adam um the blonde there in the middle is claire and then that's our admin sarah i'm like pointing to this like you can see me pointing <laughs> <laughs> but that. um yeah, right there, there, there. Um, I joined a team this year. I left, uh, I was originally with our local Caldwell Banker office, and I absolutely love them to death. Um, but I was having a very hard time kind of growing my business there. Um, and I felt very like stifled and I met with Adam and I'm like, this might be a good opportunity for me. And now I'm kind of, now my business, I have surpassed my, what I did last year, um, by almost double now. Um, I'm only seven months into it and I wish I could tell people like, if you are unsure about this business, if you are not a type A, if you, you know, personality, um, join a team, like try to be a buyer's agent first and try to join a team. If you are, have a little hint of, I'm not sure about this. Um, and the great thing about this business, if it doesn't work out for you, you can switch. So yeah, that's definitely a good thing. Interview with different brokerages and different teams. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the, talent show realtor last realtor standing because this is like a fun fact that i didn't know even just until we were talking before the broadcast this is fantastic i'm gonna bring this back up here is that the picture yeah that so that was this year that was actually just uh two weeks ago 
Um, so last year, um, I was heading down when, uh, that first rebar in Nashville, I went to, I was heading to that and I get a call from, uh, one of the people at our local women's council of realtors. Uh, she's like, Hey, we're doing this event. It's our first year for doing it. Um, will you do this? And at the time I was kind of like, Oh, I'm not sure. I'm still a baby agent. I don't know what I can say. Um, I've only done one transaction at this point. Yeah. Um, I don't have many stories, but I make the joke in my thing where, uh, I can't say no. And that's why I'm a single mom. And <laughs> that's in my routine. Um, but I was like, sure, why not? <laughs> Did it just hit you what that no, meant? It hit me twice. Yeah, yeah it's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like, um, they asked me to do it. So I did it last year and people really enjoyed my routine and I was a little bit different. What, uh, what I do is I do parodies. So, because I'm basically a walking musical, you will always find me. I am full of glitter, sunshine, everything. Oh, there's my team leader. Hi, Adam. <laughs> 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 All right, Adam, shout out. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh sorry I got distracted by him. It was really fun uh at that point because I'm like, I don't I don't have these stories that some of these like realtors are gonna have. Uh so I don't know what I'm gonna talk about. So I'm just gonna sing about situations. Um, you know, and I talk about buyers and sellers and uh mostly buyers, um, uh, because that's what I was used to dealing with at that point. And that's what I did. I narrate it with a musical kind of my thing. Like I was talking about before the to the windows, to the walls. Then I got um, invited back to our state level for it because they were doing an RPAC fundraiser. Um, and the winner from last year couldn't do it. So they asked me to do it. So I did that. And then I came back for a second year and uh, oh, the lights went out in here. It's motion. Sorry. <laughs> um, but they um, asked me to come back, and this year I won. So and apparently I offended people this year, but whatever. <laughs> so let's. Uh, you have something off the top of your head that you've done before that you could just sure for us real quick. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna bring this down. You're gonna go solo screen. I'm getting my face out of the way. Oh, you're on. Okay, so my one of my favorite ones is when I'm talking about this market. This market is super competitive right now, and you have to make a decision on the spot. If you feel it's the house for you, it's the house for you. You need to make a, um, a choice. Unfortunately, that doesn't work for everybody. They want to usually sleep on it, and my... Uh, my thing was like, stop right there. I got to know right now. And they're like, let me sleep on it. Baby, baby, let me sleep on it. I'll give you an answer in the morning. And then I'm like, no, I got to know right now. Do you want it? Do you want it forever? Do you need it? And then, that, yeah, that's kind of how I go that, with that one. Uh, uh neat though. <laughs> That's fantastic. When when I come to day end, we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna think of something. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're gonna do like I, a duo of some sort. So it's gonna be great. I talk about YPN and our orientation. Last orientation I went to for like new realtors, I say like I seen call me maybe, and I'm we'll talk about like networking and stuff, and I'm like, hey, I just met you, and this is crazy, but if you need help, call me maybe. <laughs> So yeah, that's usually people's first uh, reaction to me as I'm singing to them or throwing glitter. So <laughs> throwing glitter. <laughs> I'm gonna start doing that. I keep joking. Yeah. I'm gonna start carrying around glitter, and when I come across really like nasty people, because in this business, you, you, know, <laughs> you do. I'm just going to be like, boom! Like <laughs> you need some sparkle in your life. <laughs> <laughs> like the glitter troll from trolls like feeling like Psh. oh yeah i love that movie that's like one of my favorite movies <laughs> so 
This is fantastic. <laughs> Let's talk about balance. So I'm gonna we, we we missed the opportunity before, so I'm gonna bring up you and the mini you. That's your daughter's name? Carly. That was actually just this past week. We went on a little road trip around the country. That is up at Lake George in New York. Oh yeah. So I, I actually came through your area uh, last week. Um, Thanks for the shout out and saying, hey, J Man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I came, uh, we went to Hershey Park. Oh, we, yeah. Uh, went up to Fort Ticonderoga and we saw a American Revolution reenactment. Uh, we went to Lake George, we went to Niagara Falls, uh, like this whole trip. Um, but that's Charlie. She's seven. She's the little joy of my life. Um, but yeah, balance. I'll let you know when I get that figured out. No, no. Um, it's important. And that's like one of the things that Sean Carpenter kind of taught me. And now that I am uh, listening to a lot of audiobooks, it's kind of repetitive. Mm -hmm. He taught me how to time block. And that is your biggest thing is your family comes first, your family, our friends uh, comes first, you need to have a life. And you need to put that into your calendar first. Um, sometimes, yes, it doesn't work out. And you need to, you know, make a choice, but you need to talk to your family about it. Um, for example, I went on a vacation for six days. I worked, but I didn't work a whole heck of a lot. Um, but I got to spend a lot of time with my daughter and that was great. And now I'm back and I'm just kind of like, guys, I have to work. And I'm here in Columbus right now. I'm not uh, in my office in Dayton. Uh, I'm here in Columbus right now because I'm about to go meet my lunch, uh, family for lunch <laughs> because it's like the first time like my brothers and I can all get together. But I skipped out on moving my brother to, you know, to be here and talk to you guys, which I mean, oh, oh thank yeah. you. Uh, <laughs> I'm not moving. Oh. Um, but, you know, it's kind of a it's a balancing act. And sometimes it's really hard. I usually know I'm going to be busier in the middle of the month. Um, and I will let my family kind of know that, um, and we have a shared calendar so they're able to see, but I always tell my family, if you have something going on, my mom and my dad are amazing and they help me with my daughter, um, uh, and watching, them. Um, I couldn't do it without them. Um, but I tell them all the time, don't stop your life for me too. I mean, if I have to, I'll find babysitters and stuff. So it, it's still, I don't think it's ever going to be perfect, but I got a lot better at doing it this year. Um, mm -hmm. I've been practicing a lot with like miracle morning affirmations, uh, gratitude journals and stuff like that. And that's helped my business a lot too. Um, I've been a lot better at balance this year. And I think it, you bring up a good point. Like it's, it's always going to be a struggle. Business changes every year. It's not like we have a normal business. that's the same every single day. Like there's always going to be that struggle. I think you, you know, the fact that you put family first, it's in the schedule, right? Because when you're 80 something years old, you're not going to say, Oh, I wish I listed one more house, yeah. right? It's <laughs> going to be like you're happy that you spent more time with your kids and you made it to her events and that that road trip that you guys took and you went to Lake George and you know all she's never going to forget that yeah no it's a that's what is important to me uh not only do I even volunteer at the board and I work um I'm also on the PTA and uh I help out with Girl Scouts too she's in the Girl Scouts so um, I wasn't on, I wasn't a Girl Scout mom last year. I was the previous year, but, um, I'm going to help out a little bit more this year. I'm on the PTA this year. Um, so those are in my schedule first. And if something else comes up, sorry, like we're going to have to pick another time. And that's another thing, uh, a tip for realtors, like don't say, oh, what time is good for you? You have to give them like an option like, hey, I have this time, this time, and this time, what's which out of those times work for you? And if it doesn't, 
work for them, then uh, ask them, okay, what time does work for you? And I can see if I have an availability in my schedule at that time. If not, let's try to figure out something else. Right, exactly. I always say like when you go to the doctor's office, they don't say, Heather, what time is good for you? We'll, we'll accommodate your schedule. No, it's like, here's our times we have available, sir or ma'am. And then it's like, you have to fit your, yeah, it's exactly the same way. We're professionals. People should treat us as such. And, you know, we dictate the schedule. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we're coming almost to an end here. And this is where we're going to get to the, you know, given the experience, the knowledge, the expertise that you've acquired in these two years, I think though, you have an accelerated learning curve because of all of the education and the people that you've met along the way that have helped you get to, I would say, almost 10 years worth of knowledge and experience. Uh, what kind of advice would you give to a newer agent that you haven't given already, you know, the, find the mentor, get education? What else, what else would you say or maybe dive deeper on? Take time for yourself. I have to feel like I have to put that in there again. You do have to take time for yourself, whether it be with family or just um, taking, waking up an hour earlier, which I'm trying to do Miracle Morning right now, and it's not working out for me because I cannot wake up early for the life of me. But usually I go to bed later than people, so it's almost like my Miracle Night. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, writing down your goals and sharing them with other people um, is a big thing. Um, I have a goal board at work that we, uh, my team leader and had us do at the beginning of the year. Um, one of my things, you know, on my board was all these places I wanted to go. And I've gone out of like already like four out of six or five out of six of these places I want to go this year. Um, I've met my goals. Um, and one of my big goals too was I just want to inspire people this year. So this is, you know, hopefully I'm inspiring people. Um, eventually I want to move on to, you know, like teaching people. I want to, you know, you know, help people and speak to people and everything. I don't think I'm that knowledgeable yet, uh, to, you know, say this is how you build your business and stuff, but I can definitely help people interact with each other. Um, join a team. I think I said that I, uh, or interview with different brokerages, see what's the best fit for you and definitely make like a spreadsheet of the pros and cons, um, and go with your gut feeling on it. Um, we'll see here, talk to people and meet people. Uh, don't be afraid to reach out for people. Um, and if something, if that's something you say you want to do, like right now, I really, in trying to get into video. And um, I just started like beginning of this month, I did a adulting 101 series. Um, and it has nothing to do with real estate, but it's just something I'm like, it's fun. Millennials are always talking about how do I be an adult? Like nobody taught me how to balance a checkbook. They taught me how to do calculus. I'm not using calculus in my everyday life. Um, Your story. So I'm starting, you know, to do a video a little bit more. Um, I found, you know, people that I really admire how they do video. Uh, shout out to my friend Colin Cameron. He is amazing at video. I'm not sure if you've seen any of his stuff, but definitely go check out his stuff. He's hilarious. And um, I know I like doing parodies, so I'm going to be doing a lot of that. But Finding your niche and finding uh, your focus is, you know, a big thing. I'm not sure what else I had. I have like notes, but those are your big things. I would say like my tips, uh, find your tribe, find people that will help support you and everything. That's a big one too. And your tribe. Yeah. So, yeah, find finding people you can vent, vent to, talk to, um, and got to know, like, it's just not, it's not even, like, bro different brokerages. Like, I feel like I could still go to people from different brokerages and ask them questions. Uh, if I have any questions on like investments and stuff like that, I can ask my team leader, but if I want a different perspective, I can ask somebody else I know that's really good at um, investments that may not be a part of my brokerage. 
Um, if I'm having issues working for something, I can go to anybody and it doesn't matter uh, where or who they are. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting emotional. Get emotional. <laughs> well, it's, well, it's so many important points that you can have a support system in place so that when you have a question on your head, you're not, you're not alone. alone. I'm getting an echo. Yeah. Echo. Oh, sorry. Um, Is it me? Yeah, a little bit. No problem. So I think it's a good good point to close on that, you know, like if reach out to somebody, find somebody to support, find a mentor. If you don't have one or you can't find one within your company, don't be afraid to reach out to your local YPN because it's just a group of, of young, like-minded people who want to help one another. It's not like we're trying to hold each other down. We're trying to bring each other up. You know, the rising tide raises all boats. Somebody told me that and it always stuck with me. That if, you know, we can all do well, we can all do big things because we're the, we are the now, but we're also the future of the industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love why the YPN has helped me tremendously. And um, I'm actually going to the retreat here in a couple of weeks to meet with other YPNs across the country and get ideas on how we can enrich our board. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't really like talk a lot about our YPN. Our YPN is awesome. We actually won YPN of the year um in ohio for this past year um and they're amazing we do a lot of stuff uh we do quarterly happy hours and we do outreach to the community um that's our lip sync competition that we do our street fair um we did a mashup of all 90 songs that's why we have little horses because we did the song pony um <laughs> But we, you know, we get really involved. We show our board that we are important. We bring something to the table. We're not just partying. And I think that's a lot like um, what a lot of boards, you know, feel about their YPNs is that they're just big partiers. And we're not like you got to give them a chance um, because right. we can do some amazing things and we can help uh, the boards out so much. Um, and so teaming up with your YPNs would be, you know, an awesome, awesome idea and help support them. All right, Heather. Well, thank you so much. And thank any, thank everybody for tuning in live or watching this on the rebroadcast. If you want to subscribe to Millennial Who Talks, just type Millennial Who down in the comments below. Um, or there's another comment keyword that I created. I'll have to post it in the comments because I can't remember right now, but it has to do with Haas's, Haas rules. I think that might be it. If you type host rules in the comments below, you'll be subscribed to our Millennium Move Talks Yay. series. So thanks again. And if, if you want to reach out to Heather, obviously you could just message below or message her on Facebook. Yeah, if you're watching this, add me on Facebook. Like I like making new friends. Send me a comment if you have any questions. Uh, if you just want to say hi, uh, I'll put you on my list because I definitely like meeting new people. So. Awesome. Thank you, Heather. Awesome. Thank you.